What's up guys, Hey King here bringing you a review on Spider-Man Miles Morales. So yeah, I just got done playing this, got it here, on the PS4, yes, the PS4 version. You've probably seen a lot of people uh, posting reviews or footage from the PS5 version. Uh, I imagine it's good looking, awesome, cool, no problems. Yeah, I'm not getting a PS5 until... I don't know, next year, or maybe uh, 2022 New Year, you know, depending, you know, it really depends, honestly, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait to save my money up, I'm going to wait until they potentially release a better model of the PS5, and I'm going to wait for the games to drop price as well, because, yeah, they're, they're a little expensive, guys, I mean, £70, come on, that's that's the amount of pr money price I pay when I want to get a steelbook or a freaking special edition, whatever, like, like... Imagine how much the special editions for those are going to be now. <laughs> like, I mean, close to a hundred pounds. That's just, that's insane. Like, my mind can't grasp that insanity. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, like it's it's insane. But yeah, um, Mars Morales. Finally managed to uh, finish this. Uh, planned it today. Uh, when did I get this? I got this on Friday. So I've been playing since Friday. Today is Monday now. It's Monday. It's Monday mid Monday midnight now. It's getting close to Tuesday. And yeah, uh, like I said, I just planned this, and you're required to play this game twice, basically. So, but yeah, uh, Miles Morales. You know, before I talk about this game, I kind of need to go through a little history session with all of you regarding my love and sort of disappointment with a lot of the Spider-Man games over the years. So, you know, let's start off with the first one, uh, Spider-Man on the PS1. Uh, great game, honestly, great freaking game. It had Stan Lee narrating that game. You know, you had appearances from a lot of different characters like Captain America, Daredevil, Punisher, uh, the Human Torch. And also you had a wide variety of different villains ranging from Scorpion, Rhino, Venom, Carnage, Dark Ark, and uh, Jesus, was that it? Just just those ones? No, I remember, I remember there was a lot more. No, it's just those ones. Wow. It's not a lot when you think about it. Oh yeah, well, yeah. But still, like, you, you know, it, it felt like it had the A-listers in there, basically. And yeah, just a great freaking game full of good variety. And then you had the sequel, Spider-Man 2 into Electro and yeah it wasn't as good it, it it wasn't it wasn't as good like that game like what it had Electro obviously Hammerhead Sandman that was kind of fun you had to use the water to defeat him and the lizard where you had to sort of create a cure very quickly very fast otherwise he would kill you and then yeah you'd start the level over again but that, that was kind of cool and obviously each of those games was very linear it wasn't free roaming and and your webs were sort of being grabbed by god as you were swinging through <laughs> the city and that but they, they were fun to play as a whole but yeah that sequel wasn't all that and then of course we entered the ps2 era and we had the uh spider-man one uh, t uh movie tie-in game and that was that was my first ps2 game okay that was my first ps2 game i bought i remember and I loved that freaking game. I had a guide for it and everything at the ready as well. And uh, I, I think I think I remember finishing that in a day or, or two. But because I, I was just playing that religiously from 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 the moment I got my PS2 to the end of, of the night. I think such a fun game. And then of course we ended up with uh, Spider-Man 2. And uh, yeah, that was the movie title as well. And that was the first Spider-Man game to sort of give us this open world basically. You know, it was Spider-Man Grand Theft Auto essentially. It was like, yes, here we go. Spider-Man's going free roaming and that was cool that was cool that's one of the better movie tie-in games as well because it while, it while it still told the story of the movie it added its own little elements in it sort of like with black cat appearing for example and having this sort of a uh, loft, loft triangle between peter uh black cat and mj and you know you had characters like mysterio showing up who you know he's, he's the master of illusion and you end up beating him in one punch as well like <laughs> when when I when I think about when I think about that fight when, or that particular moment in the game, it reminds me of the executioner boss fight from the Batman Arkham Origins game, and, I, and I'm kind of wondering if the developers sort of saw that and they were like, Let, let's do that, but with, with electrocutioner for, for for our game, like because it, it brings me like memories of that. And yeah, that, that was that was a, that was a, that was a really fun game. I remember playing that multiple times. But God, were the side missions annoying? Collect collect the balloons or do the pizza runs and a whole bunch of other crap. Like uh, yeah, it dragged. It dragged. Like trying to complete that game 100% was annoying. And I, and I think I think back in those days, a lot of us weren't playing or trying to complete games 100% in it. And then we had uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. 
um, I remember playing that for the original Xbox. Uh, that was that was all right. I liked it. Was like more comic booky, of course. It, it, it was essentially part of the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, comic book run. Like that, that, that storyline was, I think, canon. And yeah, it, it was all right. I liked I liked a lot of the character designs for some of the characters. The Beetle in, in that especially was very cool looking. Like that, like like look at like Iron Man type uh, villain. That was cool. And you got to play Venom as well in that game. And, and eat people. I think you even got to eat kids. I remember, like, yeah, you could eat, you could eat children, but I think you spat them back out. But still, like, damn, like, <laughs> really dark for for a game, uh, you know, about Spider-Man and that. And then we ended up with Spider-Man Three, and I remember there were two different distinct versions of that game. Okay, I, I got the, I, I remember playing the PS3 version first, uh, like in a store, but I, I still had the PS2 at the time, so I bought the PS2 version on launch. And I finished that in a day, and I can tell you right now that was a piece of shit. Um, uh, there were positives. The story was a bit more was a bit more self-contained, a bit more tighter compared to the PS3 version, where it had just a whole bunch of villains thrown in. But that was more entertaining from a fun perspective. But if you're looking for more of a story perspective, I think the PS2 version was a bit more tight. Like it had exclusive villains like uh, Morbius and Shriek, and that sort of tied in with the whole meteor or, or, or the symbiote elements of the storyline, and uh, it was, there was this whole cool hallucination part as well, where you're fighting Shriek and you're and you're and you're beating up hallucination hallucinated versions. I think of uh, JJ Jameson, Kurt Connors, uh, Harry Osborn, and MJ. I think uh, that, that was kind of meta. And uh, one of the unique aspects of that game as well, especially, was that you could wear the black suit whenever you wanted. Not all, not all. Well, yeah, pretty much whenever you wanted, but it was on a timer. You had like a good minute or two, and I think you had to fight uh, villains constantly in order to use it. And then every time you did use the black suit, the environment would change. So you know, trees. There, there wouldn't be any leaves, the, 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 the streets would be dirty, there would be cracks, it would be like very dark and foggy I think at times, so that was kind of cool, that little detail, whereas if you wear the normal suit, it, it goes all sunny and clean and everything, so th those little environmental aspects of it were cool, but overall that game was just, I just remember thinking it was trash, I mean, the si again, side missions, uh, fruit pies, my fruit pies have gone missing or some crap, like seriously, like wow, wow, that was terrible. The PS3 version, on the other hand, I remember having a lot of fun with that at the time because uh, you know we, we games like God of War and Resident Evil 4 had come out, and I swear to God, those games were responsible for making quick time events so freaking cool. And there was tons of quick time events in the PS3 version of that game, and the amount of boss fights you had in that as well. Like you know, besides the ones from the movies, you had uh, uh, New Goblin and Sandman and Venom, obviously. You also had Kingpin, uh, which was exclusive to that version of the game. You had Scorpion again, exclusive to that version of the game, and and Rhino as well, yeah, Rhino was exclusive to that version. Uh, obviously, he still fought Lizard and Craven. Calypso appeared in the PS3 version with Craven, whereas in the PS2 he didn't. It was just it was just Craven going uh, hunting after Kurt Connors. So it was a lot of differences. But yeah, I think overall gameplay was definitely a lot more better in the PS3 version. And you had sort of unique villains as well that were working on the Kingpin. I think uh, one of the elements of that game was you had to learn how to dodge. If you knew how to dodge, then the game would be piss easy for you. If not, then it was going to be a very difficult chore. But yeah, uh, I remember playing it the first time, loving it, and then I think upon re repeats or trying to replay, I just remembered how very bad the graphics were, and the graphics were very bad. Holy crap! And yeah, it just it, it wasn't a fun experience as the PS2 version of the game was. And then I think we we had Web of Shadows, and I remember Web of Shadows being a very very weird game. Like the the voice actor of Spider Man, and that was just was was terrible. I think. But like the storyline and the boss fights were amazing. Like you, you know, you you had you you could fight Wolverine, you fought Black Cat, Vulture, and Electro. And then obviously at, at the halfway point of the game, like the symbiote invasion begins, and all the characters start getting infected, and it becomes like a war zone. You've got Black Widow with the short hair coming in. You got Kingpin helping out. You could uh, call Rhino for help and ride on him. You could call Vulture in, depending on uh, where you were aligned, because it, the game was sort of based choice as well. Like you know, you could you could get a good ending, or you could get a bad ending, depending on your choice. Choices. You could wear the black suit uh, from beginning to end of the game, uh, upgrade that suit or upgrade the normal suit. Like it was a very, and of course the combat system was amazing. You could fight on walls in the air. You had this, uh, this, the zip, the web zip line was upgraded where you could just jump from enemy to enemy. Like oh god, it was it was great. And uh, yeah, Luke Cage was in there as well. Like like it, it was just so different. MJ in that game was a badass. Like this was there's this one segment in the game where you're fighting freaking uh, black uh, black cat 
all simulated up and, and she comes in on a helicarrier, like on a heli jet, whatever, with a shotgun and shit. Like, and the final boss fight on the helicarrier as well, where you get all your allies that, that you've aligned with at that point helping you, and then you're fighting like a three headed uh, or five headed uh, Venom, I think, at the end. Like, crazy, crazy game, but very unique and fun and different. And then I think at, at that point they stopped doing free roaming Spider Man games, and we had like a. Uh, uh, Shattered Dimensions and uh, Edge of Time, I think, which I never played, unfortunately. I played a bit of uh, Shattered Dimensions, but uh, overall, I didn't really enjoy them as much, uh, sadly. I kind of wish I could go back and try those games out properly. I heard Edge of Time was actually really unique and cool, but alas, I didn't give it, I didn't give it the chance it deserved. <laughs> And then uh, we ended up with the Amazing Spider-Man games, and I remember the Amazing Spider-Man 1 game being sort of good. That was like a sequel to the movie, uh, and that was kind of unique. Like, it, it, the story sort of continued, and, and it had Alistair Smythe as the main villain of that game, and had a bunch of other villains appearing, but they were like uh, mutated animal versions of, the, of those characters. So you like, yeah, yeah, had Reiner again, you had that Scorpion. Uh, yeah, very very unique elements in that. But again, the the web slinging was more like it was like the PS1 era of the games, and not the PS2 era as well. You could stick to walls and that, so that was very different as well. But I remember enjoying that. I remember enjoying that game. I didn't play the Amazing Spider-Man 2, sadly. And that was and that was it for Spider-Man games. I think I remember like growing up playing until we ended up with uh, Marvel's uh, Spider-Man exclusive on the PS4, which has also now been remastered for. The PS5 and that game, oh, that game, mwah, mwah, from a writing perspective. The story in that was amazing. The writing, the characters, amazing. The gameplay, however, ooh, ooh, and this is, but this is where you're gonna go. You guys are gonna boo and hate me, but it needs to be said. So yeah, uh, Marvel Spider-Man. Let, let me get it out. Let me see if I got it somewhere. Yeah, I do. I do have it. Look at that. I got the special edition of this game. I wish I hadn't got this now, because there's a Game of Year edition of the game with all the uh, DLC on it. I'd rather, I'd rather have that, but nope, I ended up getting this. The steelbook and the artbook and everything. And yeah, this was this was a good game, actually. I do remember enjoying this, and this is one of the better uh, uh, PS4 exclusives. But like I said, the writing was, was amazing. Peter's uh, development and his relationship with MJ and Aunt May and Mars Morales and Dr. Uh, Octavius were great. And Octavius, man, like as a villain, like they did such a good job adapting and making that uh, Pacific character so unique and different to what we had before. And also the introduction of Mr. Negative and uh, Slash Martin Lee, that, that was cool, that was unique, that was different. You wouldn't think in a million years they would take a character like that and, and have him be such a main focus. But no, they did. And he was done really cool as well. Like. Like I said, it was it was written very very well. Gameplay, however, honestly, I thought it was just similar to to the Amazing Spider-Man One because the Amazing Spider-Man One, what what the Amazing Spider-Man One did was basically copy the combat system of Arkham Asylum. Uh, sorry, yeah, pretty much the Batman Arkham games. Those came out and they sort of revolutionized the free flowing kind of combat. And uh, the Amazing Spider-Man One copied that. And this game, honestly, like when I was playing this one at the time when, when I first got it, I just remember thinking this is basically the Amazing Spider-Man 1. Uh, except it's slightly better, obviously, because now that your webbing uh, sticks to buildings and, you actually, and, and it feels like you're swinging through the city. It doesn't feel as slow as hell as it did back with uh, Spider-Man 3. Uh, the graphics are just like freaking amazing and popping out now. And yeah, like just a very good written story. But uh, boss fight wise, I think it was weak. I didn't really enjoy any of the boss fights. It was cool and unique where you sort of had to take on two at the same time. But really, that game, man, like um, th those fights didn't happen until like the third act of the game. Like the game was broken up into three parts. And all the major stuff, like the game was hyping up, didn't occur until the third act. You had to play through two acts of a game before the story got to the point where it's like, okay, now now we're going like crazy big and now Doc Ock is in the picture, like, and, and now you're fighting the Sinister Six and like, yeah, that was cool and that, but like, Jesus, it took forever to get to that point of the story. And obviously the MJ side missions, uh, stealth sections uh, that you had, uh, yeah, those were fine, honestly, a lot of people complain about that, but I didn't mind it, I thought it was alright. But yeah, overall, I just thought gameplay-wise, I didn't think it was that great or unique. Like, I like the ability to change suits and that, that was cool. But really, like, in the end of the day, the suits were just skins, really. Yeah, sure, they gave you some sort of abilities, but in the end, did it really matter a lot? Nah, not essentially. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I do remember enjoying it. I thought, like I said, from a, from a writing perspective, the story was great. And that's kind of what I was looking forward to when it came with Mars Morales. I wanted to see what they would do with his character. And... 
Yeah, uh, before I actually go into this, before I go into the plot and the gameplay, I will have to talk about the negatives because holy crap, there's a lot of negatives to talk about this. So first of all, I imagine the PS5 version of this game runs very, very bloody well, right? Very smoothly, very well, no problems whatsoever. That's what I'm imagining, okay? I played this on PS4 and the moment I put this into the console, it asked me, it asked me to update and I, I did. I did the update as well and at that point you're thinking, okay, no, no problems. There, there's patches, it's all fixed up, it should run smoothly as hell. Hell no! Holy crap did I suffer through so many glitches in this game. And I'm going to tell you about all of them that I can remember, yeah? Okay, first major one. First major one, I've, I've done like 30% of the game. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm loading up the game from an auto save. And I'm swinging through an area and suddenly I can't swing anymore. Okay, my character's not swinging, he's free falling. And he goes through the freaking floor and he's just falling beneath New York. And then he dies. Okay. Weird glitch, but I imagine this was just a one time. Nope, I load up the game again and I'm swinging, and then suddenly he stops swinging, he's free falling, and he dies in the exact same spot. This goes on for like a good 10 minutes, okay? I'm doing this for 10 minutes. God knows how many times I died, God knows how many times I was just sitting there thinking I should just take the disc and snap it in half, because at that point I was, I was just fum uh, fumigating, man, like Christ. And then I just thought, you know what, L let me load it up manually, right? And God knows why this works, because yeah, yeah, I loaded up manually this game, my, and the glitch disappeared. The game started running perfectly fine after that. So for some reason, I stopped loading this, uh, you know, with the autosave, and I just started manually loading it. At that point, I had to save constantly every time I was playing this. So that, that's, that's one problem. The problem number two, um, I'm at the final boss fight of the game, and suddenly the game just sort of decides to freeze, okay? Like, I'm fighting the final boss. And then it gets to the final phase of the fight, and then it just sort of, it, 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 for some reason, it glitched. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. You're fighting the boss. I'm hitting the boss many, many times. The boss isn't doing anything. They're just standing still and taking my punches. And this goes on for a good minute before I realize, no, this fight, this fight is glitched. Nothing's happening. Like, I'm standing away from the, from the, from the boss. They're not even attacking, they're just standing there and taking my hits. And yeah, I had to restart that boss fight because of that. Jesus, like how annoying is that? And I'm telling you, the playing this game on normal difficulty, it's still hard as hell. Like this game is hard. Even on normal difficulty, this game is difficultly hard. And and that final boss fight was a freaking nightmare to do. And uh, one of the glitches that I encounter are uh, voices, voices. Sometimes the vo the voices would not, uh, the audio would cough. Like, I'm, I'm playing the game, and, and, and Miles would be talking to another character, and then the other character would be talking too, but you wouldn't hear any dialogue. Okay, suddenly the voice wouldn't work. So there's, there's no light dialogue, and, and you, you'd have to, like, pause... Pause the cutscene or the game in order to get it working again, but then it would happen again and you have to constantly pause just to sort of get the audio back. So it was, that was very weird. Uh, the game freezing. At, at a lot of moments in this game, you're swinging through the city and suddenly it freezes. And at that point I'm thinking, oh my god, my, my PS4 is dead or it's frozen. I'm going to have to do that thing where you're turning off the console and turning it back on. No, 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 no. It's, it's still running. It's just, it's frozen at that point and it's sort of waiting to sort of load up before it gets going again and that, that takes a good few seconds but Jesus is it not annoying because this will happen a few goddamn times as you're playing this game so yeah that was problem number three no sorry that was problem number four actually <laughs> oh god um uh, anything else yeah at one point I'm playing the game and uh, and Miles has no suit on like it, it's just the head it's just the head in the way and, and there's nothing there and that, that was weird that was that was bloody weird like the amount of glitches I found playing this game was just it, it, it's it's confusing how how this happened I don't I don't get how this happened I don't because I remember playing the the, the you know the PS uh, the, you know playing this and I don't think I remember any glitches with this game but this Jesus Christ what's going on What's going? What's what? What is it? What it, 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 insomniac? What what were you doing? What were we doing for all these years? Did you not fix up an integral of all the bugs and that? What the hell's going on? Like that was such a problem, and it really, really hurt my enjoyment of this game from uh, from time to time. Now, a as for actual complaints relating to the gameplay, I'm gonna tell you guys. I really hate the challenges in this game. I hated them in the first one that we had, and I hate them in this one. Like they're they're freaking difficult to do. 
The good thing is, you don't you don't need to fully do all of it, like get the best score in order to 100% this game, thank God. You know, the developers finally got their mind and the cheek to be like, you know what, it, it was hard in the first game and, and they were forced to sort of do everything to get 100%. You don't wanna, you won't have to do that with this one. You know, you get, you get all the tokens and all the, uh, you know, uh, little things, points you need in order to upgrade your skills and your suits from the get-go. You know, you can do some crime missions uh, over and over again and just build up your points to unlock everything that you want. So it's fine. It's good. Better being better, boom, ching. That's one improvement they did. Uh, story-wise, story-wise, uh, this game is... I liked it. I thought it, uh, it's, it's all right. It's not the greatest story ever told, uh, especially when coming from from how great that first Spider-Man game was. Uh, but in the end of the day, this is Miles' game. Okay, it's about him, and it's looking at how he's dealing with things after what happened, you know, with the previous game. And yeah, they do a good job of that. You know, I went into this thinking, oh, we're gonna have Peter Parker sort of mentoring us and that. No, that doesn't happen. Peter Parker is in this game for only the prologue section of the game. And then he's gone. Occasionally, you'll get like a little uh, phone call with him, and you and you got some training missions, obviously that he does as well. But uh, yeah, he, he's not a big part of this game. Basically, he's, he's he's basically a cameo, and this entire game focuses on Miles and his relationship with uh, Gonky. You know, who's a great psychic, by the way. Uh, and honestly, it just reminds me of Ned Leeds from the uh, MCU Spider-Man movies. I can't get over how much they screwed that aspect of those movies up like let, let's cast Ned Leeds but basically make him gonky like honestly I'm telling you guys now if Ned Leeds doesn't die in the third Spider-Man film that we're getting then make basically making his character like gunky basically was utterly pointless like my, my whole my whole assumption is that they were originally gonna do gunky but then they were like you know what screw it let's call him Ned Leeds we'll have him uh, get have a romance with Betty Brad in in the sequel which they did and then we'll kill him off in the third one uh, with this emotional ending payoff I'm telling you that's what they're gonna do and if not then it's it's just ridiculous really because every every time I saw that character in the movie I was just thinking it, it's gunky it's it, it's gunky for Christ's sake that's, that's who the character is but yeah, uh, you got that, uh, you got a relationship with his mom, that's great, and his uncle, uh, Aaron Davis, is introduced, and yes, he, he is the prowler in this game, there's a bit of history there with uh, him and his dad as well, like, so they do delve into that a bit, though you kind of have to do the side missions for that, but they're worth it, you know, you get a lot of emotional value from it. I have to say, this game is, <laughs> this game is emotional at times, like, it did sort of make me shed a bit of a tear, especially when doing some of the uh, side quests and that, that kind of relate to Miles and his dad and that, uh, those were... That was my tear jerking, man. Like, damn, like, uh, the feels. The feels, man. But, uh, yeah, if if you're going into this game and you're thinking you're going to get, like, this big, big game like you did with the first one, you're not. This game is really short, and yet it isn't really short. Um, a lot of people are gonna, probably going to compare this to Lost Legacy, you know, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Uh, it, it's on the same level as that, I would say. But at the same time, it... This does feel like its own self-contained game. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like a DLC essentially. Like, I would argue this is this is basically like sort of like Arkham Origins. Basically, it's like a reskin of of the map that we had, but there are new sort of things to it. The the city environment is still the same. That that hasn't changed. The city is still the same, uh, except that you know the combat is slightly different. You know, Mars has the ability to shoot out like bio engineered electricity so you've got special moves related to that you've got the camouflage that you unlock later on so you got that that's cool and yeah the villains you find in this game not a lot of villains unfortunately with uh, with uh, the original game you had you know you had the sinister six obviously you know ranging from doc ock uh, mr negative scorpion rhino uh, vulture electro and then you also had like uh, side villains like uh, taskmaster uh, tombstone and uh Kingpin at the beginning and Shocker. So that's that's 10 villains basically in that one game. This one you have basically Rhino and Prowler and Tinkerer. And that's it. That's it. You have three villains in this game. Let that sink in. And really, yeah, it kind of makes sense with what the story of the game is going for. Like, you know, it, you know, the Tinkerer is in this game is the Tinkerer in this game is actually a bit weird. Uh, the, uh, cool, but weird because uh, in in the original comics and yeah, in the original comics, the Tinkerer is is an old is an old man. And in the movie, in the MCU, uh, we had we did have the Tinkerer, and he he was basically sort of this like fat chubby dude who was helping the Vulture with his uh, tech and that in the Homecoming movie, and. 
Again, uh, in, in, in the comics, uh, Tinkerer also has a son called Rick Mason. Uh, and Rick Mason is in this game, but they're no longer the Tinkerer's son. Instead, the Tinkerer is someone else that's related to... It's really obvious who the Tinkerer in this game is. Like they, they, The Tinkerer in this game is a girl, by the way. Like If, you, if, you've, seen, if you've seen the reveal trailer, you know it's a fe the villain of this game is, a, is, is basically a female character. And they don't even try to hide it. Like If you know your comic stuff, the moment you hear the character's name, you're like, oh... Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, that's obviously a short version of the Tinkerer's actual, yeah, it's the Tinkerer, that's gonna be the Tinkerer, like, who, who else is it gonna be? Is it gonna be the death girl that you meet in this game? That would've been a twist, that would've been cool, but no, that's, that's not the case. Uh, and they do come up with an emotional reason with uh, why the characters doing what they're doing, and they sort of tie it in with that. So that's kind of cool, like, the, the way they took that element of the comics, and they adapted for this. Uh, whereas in the MCU, they're doing a totally different thing, because in the MCU, you've got the Tinkerer, but in the new Black Widow movie, they're introducing Rick Mason, except the, that version of Rick Mason has no relation to uh, the Phileas Mason from Spider-Man Homecoming. So that, that's, that's very weird. Now, you know, that's, that's, that's going to create a whole other situation now where people are going to be like, oh, are these characters related? You know, like, because uh, people got, people asked the same question when it when it came to uh, Fundable uh, General Ross and uh, Everett Ross from Black Panther. People were like, are these two related? It's like, because they have the same, same surname. It's like, no, they're, they're not related. That's not the case. Whereas in the comics, these two, yeah, they're related. But, you know, different uh, in, in the movie universe, no, they're not. So that's going to be very weird. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, the, all of, to all of that crap happening. Like, But yeah, um, Tinkerer, Rhino, again. Uh, though they sort of do a bit more with him in, in this game than they did in the last one and the Prowler, the Prowler, the Prowler is cool, the Prowler is cool, like, uh, honestly I think I think I prefer the uh, Into the Spider-Verse version of the character, but they do a good version of this version of the character as well, he's sort of like an anti-hero in that, so that's kind of cool. Um, cameo villains, uh, you do have cameo villains I would actually say, so technically speaking it's not just those three, but uh, one cameo villain, uh, can I, can I, you sort of fight the and then there's another uh, villain that reappears as well that sort of maybe sets up something in the future for miles as well but you don't you don't fight that character they, they they're just a cameo sort of appearing here and then in the side missions so technically it's like it's like five villains sort of in here four with you'll, you'll get what i mean if you play the game i don't want to spoil it um it, it, it is a returning villain but not in the way you would expect i would argue but yeah short ass game with with with, with pretty much what you've seen before in the previous game, uh, but uh, slight, slightly less side missions to do, I would say. There's a lot more collectibles, you know, you're collecting st stuff for your, for your upgrades, and uh, obviously the usual collectibles like you had with uh, Peter Parker going for the backpacks. Now you're going, you're going, you're going around collecting my memorabilia. Yeah, there's some side stuff with like uh, finding Pacific Noise and then using that to unlock a new suit towards the end. And, uh, you know, the warehouse uh, missions again, you know, you're, you're cleaning up or doing stuff. I have to say, like I said, this game is hard. This game is freaking hard at times. And stealth is absolutely advised in this game. Like, this game really tries to make you do stealth in this game. And understandable, it's fine. Uh, most of the time, you actually want to be doing this game stealth until you get caught and you screw up. And then you're forced to fight wave after wave of enemies, which gets really really repetitive because you're really, you're really fighting two different kinds of enemies in this game most of the time which is uh the the underground dead by the tinkerer and 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 Roxxon, who yeah surprisingly they make, they make a big thing with Roxxon in this game which is kind of cool like the again with the with the mcu you sort of get little hints and stuff with Roxxon, but they haven't done anything major with them really this game does it like that's that's cool to see it's it's cool to see the world expand basically and it's cool to see the way miles acts as Spider-Man, as his own Spider-Man this, and how he interacts with, with characters in his life, and how Harlem especially is this big thing in his life as well, Like because Harlem, uh, as his place in New York, is very focused upon, and that's really cool to see. Uh, one of the disappointing aspects, however, is, is the fact that this game sort of takes place in a world where all the other heroes exist. If you play the, again, if you play the uh, uh, first Spider-Man game, you know, you go to all these different locations where all of these different uh, characters exist, you know. And, uh, you know, you've got the Wakanda Embassy, you've got uh, the dead, you know, the Matt Murdock's lawyer area uh, office set up. Uh, you've got the Avengers Tower, for Christ's sake, and yet, and yet there's no other heroes in this game, which is weird. You know, you'd think you'd think they do what they did with uh, Web of Shadows, basically, and sort of have some of the characters cameo. I don't know if there's specific rights, exclusive rights to those characters. I know Disney owns them, but, you know, you, uh, honestly, I, I, I remember Web of Shadows coming out at the time, and that wasn't all. I think the characters... 
I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think, yeah, uh, Disney did have the rights to some of those characters, but they, they, were, they were still being able to use, they were still able to use those characters in, in that game, I think I remember right, no? Weird. But the point is, I, I'd like to, you know, if the, if the sequel is coming, and it, it is coming out, because this, this game, Miles Morales is basically an epilogue to the first Spider-Man game, and it's a prologue to what's going to come after, like, this game does set up... Again, it does sort of set up uh, stuff to come in in the next one. You do get a you do get a little sort of teaser at the end that sets up uh, Harry Osborn again and Norman Osborn and surprisingly uh, Kurt Connors as well. Who we don't see him, but we hear him. We see him, we don't hear. Him. It's confusing. I don't want to like give away spoilers, but he does appear. So I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna get the lizard in the next game as well. And. And with the next game I'm, as well, I'm assuming we're going to be playing as Peter Parker and Miles Morales because that's sort of how the sequel, this specific game is going. And I'm assuming that's what the sequel is going to be like. And yeah, overall, it's not it's not a bad experience, but the glitches of this game are really annoying. Um, it's 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 short. You can finish this game easily in about. You know, a lot of reviews are saying this game is like 10 hours long. Um, I would argue, I would argue it's about 50, you know, if you're doing everything, if you're doing all the side quests and that, you're doing all the friendly neighborhood side missions where you're sort of helping out people in your rhyme rent, uh, and you're doing all the crimes and you're trying to get all the objectives and you're trying to do all the warehouses and you're trying to do all the rocks on lab areas, uh, and that, uh, yeah, you're looking at, and all the collectibles as well and all the little mini, uh, parts, you're doing all of that, yeah, you're looking at a good 10 to 15, 15 hour game, I think, and then of course you unlock New Game Plus, which gives you a new costume to use, which isn't a lot, and some new upgrades as well, and suit upgrades included, again, which isn't a lot, and you, you'd probably be skipping a lot of the cutscenes and going through that faster, since you're going, if you're going, one of those guys is going for that, uh, platinum trophy, with like, like I did, so that, that was, that was worth it, you know, that was worth it in the end, but just, just exhausting, really, just exhausting, because you're just sort of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And yeah, I, I had a decent time with it. I like Miles' character. I like this version of the character. Uh, Into the Spider-Verse did a great uh, illustration of that character, and this game also did another great version of this character. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him. Uh, another complaint I'm gonna have to say is is Peter Parker's new look. I it's in it's in this game. It is in this game, unfortunately, which is sad. You do see it, and uh, you do see it. You do see it a good few times in the beginning of the game and later on. And yeah, it's it's bad. Okay, I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you're just complaining. You're gonna get used to it. You don't really get used to it because when you compare the the textures, the lighting, and the faces of all the other characters in the game, Peter Parker's does not fit. Okay, he's got this weird. The face is weirdly designed to the point where it, it's like he's wearing a, a mask or something or someone else's face. Okay, it doesn't fit the the version of the character that we had. In in, 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 in in you know in the first one and in this one and it's just it's just weird like it's, it, it feels like someone's voice is coming out of someone's else's face that's what it feels like and you compare the faces of all the other characters in game and you know there's a style to it that 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 you know you're like yeah that fits that works I get what they're going for but then you you compare it to Peter Parker's and it's like yeah that feels like it's from a different game actually yeah it doesn't work it doesn't work I hate it I wish Insomniac would just get off the ass and admit that they were wrong in changing it but. You know, that's game developers for you. They, 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 all, they all think they're right. A game developer that doesn't take on or accept the criticism are the kind of people who A, aren't very professional and don't really want to improve their games in general and don't give a crap about their audiences. That, that's my opinion anyway. Like, you know, you look at someone like Hideo Kojima and uh, they got a ton of flag for a lot of stuff they did and they try to improve it with their game specifically. So, you know... Uh, disappointing, but at, at least they got the, again, at least the writing in this is strong. And that, if there's one thing I can say is, writing-wise, this game has at least a good, decent story. But it's related to Miles Morales' character, okay? It, it has nothing to do with Peter Parker or, or Mary Jane and that. So, if you're looking for a continuation of that, you're not getting it, okay? This is all about Miles Morales and his relationship with the characters in his life. And I'm hoping those characters do appear. Like, this game does end in a way where it's setting up a lot of different plot points for where the sequel is obviously gonna go, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm looking forward to seeing where the sequel is, is gonna go. Like, I'm curious to see what villains they're actually gonna use. We know, we, know, we know we're getting Harry Osborn as potentially that universe's version of Venom. We know we're getting Kurt Connors in the next one, maybe as the Lizard. And Kingpin is sort of uh, hinted at and that, like, maybe coming back or not. So that's a bit that's a bit weird. And you've got the Prowler as well, sort of set up. And, yeah, like, it, it'll be curious to see what they do. Uh, I didn't play the DLC for the Spider-Man game, so... 
but I did watch some of the cutscenes, so I do know they sort of set up, I think, is, a, is that character called Rafe in there, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Overall, decent game, that's what I say. Now the big question comes, is it worth buying? Uh, if you've been watching so far, then obviously you should know my answer. Yeah, it's... I would say if you have a PS5, then... then oh, another complaint. The... the I keep I keep remembering stuff as I, as I'm about to reach the end. Uh, the price for this game is not worth it. I'm gonna say that it's not worth it. Uh, you know when when Uncharted Lost Legacy came out, that game was like thirty to twenty five pounds, and that was a good price for the kind of game you're getting for the length of the game that is. This game is short. Okay, again I know I said it's like fifteen. Uh, 10 to 15 hours long, but that's still a short game for for a game like this for this kind of game where Whereas the last one was like what a good 40 hours This isn't even twice as long. This isn't even the half of this is this is not the half of the length of that game Basically, so and and the price for it the full price for this game. I paid 44 pounds uh, and Yeah, it's it's not worth it. So I would say wait for a price drop and if you have a ps5 for the love of God, get it on that, because I imagine this game runs a lot more smoother and better on that console, because the PS4 version, uh, and I don't know if this is just the PS4 version, but the PS4 version was just, wow. Wow, like I said, the glitches, man, the glitches. Goddamn, like, <laughs> annoying. Very, very, very annoying. But yeah, overall decent. I, I'd give it, I'd give, I'd give it, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It, it's not as good as uh, the first Spider-Man game, which I would give an 8. So, you know, I know one point away, I know, like, what's the difference? The difference is, you know, I could upgrade my suits and wear different outfits. Those were cool, and I like the story, and I like playing as Mars. You know, if, if you've got some people coming in, oh, complaining, oh, we don't like to play as uh, different Mars characters, we only like to play as white characters. No, 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 no. Okay, the, Mars is a great character in this, and they did such a good job with him in this game. Like, they did a good job with him in, in the first one, they do a good job with him here. I like his character, I don't want to see more of it. Okay, he is... He's a good Spider-Man. He's a good Spider-Man character, and that also makes me want to say that I want to see other Spider-Man characters. Like I want to see, uh, I want to see Spider-Gwen. Like make a Spider-Man, make a Spider-Gwen game, or hell, make a Spider-Man to 2099 video game. Like, and, and, and I know they've done that with like Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time, but like I mean, like a proper free-roaming, futuristic New York. Like, like this universe has potential for so much, and. They're not using it, man. They're not using it. Like I said, like you, like this takes place in a universe where you got all these other heroes as well. Like, let's see that. Like, have some of those characters cameo. Give them little small roles. Let us do little missions with them. That'll be cool. I know there's like exclusive rights and shit, but come on, get it sorted out. Get it sorted out. What's the point of putting that in there if if we're not going to see those characters? Like, come on, come on. I want to, I want, I want to see Spider-Man interact with Doctor Strange. I want to see some weird stuff going on. Like, come on, throw it at me, man. Like. Because playing for New York is repetitive as hell, and God knows what they're gonna do with the sequel. Like I, I, I know, I think I'm sure we're saying this that we are definitely gonna be playing as as both Spider-Mans in the next game. But swinging for New York, man! Like we've done that twice now, and uh, God damn it, it's it, 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 it's it's gotten stale and boring like very very quickly. So you're gonna have to come up with something new. Come up with something new. You know, come on, come on, guys. Anyway, that's my review, guys. Hope you enjoy it. As always, like and subscribe, whatever. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.